says race isn't a biological factor like age, sex, or weight. I'm going to repeat that again. Race isn't a biological factor like age, sex, or weight. It is a social construct. I would allow, add to this, it's not just a social construct. It is also a colonial construct. It says, so how does this make its way into calculations of kidney function? Now, let's get into the science. It says the EGFR, or estimated gromular filtration rate, evaluates kidney health based on how quickly a waste compound called creatinine gets filtered from blood. It says in 1999, an equation used to calculate EGFR was modified to adjust Black people's results compared to everyone else. Remember what I said when I ended up on dialysis. I ended up on dialysis in 2007. This is after 1999. Meaning when they calculated my GFR, guess what, chicken butt? That means that mine was calculated according to my skin color. Which means that I was calculated according to a race-based system. In 2007, I was diagnosed with end-stage renal disease, ESRD, also known as chronic kidney failure, as a result of me being diagnosed with nephrotic syndrome at the age of nine. So it progressed to ESRD by the time I was 23. I know I look good, right? So with that being said, I had got on dialysis, and one of the things that was pushed, which I am grateful for, by my dialysis center, which is a nonprofit dialysis center, thank you very much, was transplant. Transplant, transplant, transplant. They said, James, we want you to get a transplant as soon as possible. Yes, a transplant is a treatment, not a cure, but it will improve your quality of life. So that was pushed my way. I got in my own way when it came to getting a transplant, right? And it's no fault of the, the, the dialysis center. They, you know, were basically like, okay, whatever you feel like doing, whatever you want to do, cool. We're behind you 100% as long as you take care of your health, right? Okay. So I decided to hold off on getting a transplant. And 16 years later, I am now starting that journey, right? Because... I realized I was in my own way. I'm exhausted. I don't want to do trans. I, don't, I mean, sorry. I don't want to do a dialysis anymore. I would like to just live my life to the best of my ability. And that comes with the addition of me wanting to do more on the ground, me wanting to do more activism, me wanting to leave the world better than I found it, right? I can't do it while sitting on dialysis three days a week. I can't do it as well, I should say. I can do it, but not as I would like to, right? So there was an article that came my way. And I would like to give a shout out to Leroy. Leroy, you're the one that inspired this story. And it kind of smacked me in the face. But before I get into the article, I want to talk about something that a lot of people will probably kind of twist their nose or scrunch their nose at me for, and that is racism. On the left, there's a lot of people that say we can't focus on race. We have to only focus on class. Number one, class is also an identity. But also, race is a tool used by class to make a hierarchy. With that being said, that hierarchy is enforced in order to keep people disadvantaged more than others. This is also done within healthcare. Class and race are intertwined. 
when you have the class reductionist and the race reductionist both going, well, class is more important or race is more important. It's like, mm -mm, not within the context of this imperial core. No, they are both. It's not one over the, over the other because the system created it to be intertwined. So therefore, that's the way it is in this country. Unfortunately, you have to focus on both. So this is one of the things that we're going to talk about. Is how race is intertwined into the medical system, but also how it affects us as far as class analysis. So I'm just going to share how race is affected within the medical system. Just going to look at a couple of videos that actually talk about it. And then we'll get into the article that I found that smacked me in my face. So let's get into this. All right. Let me share the screen. And I know there's going to be some people that may disagree, and that's okay. But ultimately, it all boils down to race and class. All right. So let's take a look at this. So this is how systemic racism actually affects medicine. A 2016 study looked at the perceptions that medical students and doctors had when it came to African-American patients. What the study found was that there were medical students and doctors who believed that African-Americans had a higher pain tolerance than any other race, which is actually not true. This was a false belief that many people had. You see, you cannot quantify pain and you can't compare pain tolerance between certain races just because it is impossible to do that. We all perceive pain differently and we all have a different tolerance for pain irregardless of what our race is or what the color of our skin is. But by believing that there are biological differences, many people, even doctors, believe that African Americans are able to tolerate more pain and thus African Americans often do not get the care they deserve and they need which is wrong. Now, one of the things that I wanted to bring up is that could this be exclusively a class issue? Yeah. But a lot of times it's race. Now, uh, you guys can go back to when I brought up the article about how NYU was discriminating against poorer patients and they were sending them to the more, uh, into the hospital that has a further influx of patients in it. They would just dump those patients onto that hospital and then you know, the patients that were giving money, donating money to NYU, those patients, whenever they came into the emergency room or the emergency department, they were put to the top of the list in triage. Instead of it being actual based on medical evidence and care, it's based on your tax bracket, right? So that's a class-based. But it goes further because you could still be poor and white, but you still get better treat better treatment in the medical field. So this is where race comes in. Never mind the fact that there have been rich black folk who even reported to being discriminated against based on their race as well. Never mind the fact that there has been reports of infant mortality among black mothers. I can, I can literally just pull these up, but what's the use, right? Because we all know that these figures. 
but it's true. And so I think this is why it is important to focus on both, not one or the other, not to separate both, because we are affected disproportionately because of it. We're affected really in both ways. So I have another video that I would like to share. Let me share this as well. Okay. I should have had these already up. But... All right. So this is another variable that people don't think about if you don't have to constantly think about race. Hey doc, can you help me? My baby's losing weight. She's not eating and she's developed all these bruises all over her body that I don't know where it's from. Oh my gosh, the poor thing, totally not your fault. Let's get you connected with a lactation consultant, a nutritionist, and let's just draw some labs to make sure baby is medically okay. Now, by the way, just to let you guys know, this isn't exclusive to all white patients that get seen, but it's been done enough to the point where we notice. We notice how it happens. We notice how white patients are treated in comparison to black patients. We see it all the time. And even white patients will go, well, yeah, I was treated like this. Why weren't you? Oh my gosh, what have you been doing to this child? This is very neglectful. Why didn't you bring her in sooner? And I don't know about these bruises. They seem really suspicious. I'm going to have to call CPS. I'm a mandated reporter. And people can say, well, this is just cherry pick, but if it happens so often, then why are we able to pinpoint this? And 99% of black people are able to go, yep, mm -hmm, that's how it happens. How? One more. There's a doctor, well, I think he's a medical student on TikTok. And he talks about the difference, not the differences, but how racism in medicine really affects us. And let me just share his page. So his name is uh, Joe Prevell. He has a TikTok page. And a lot of the testing, uh, a lot of things that are done with testing, it has to do with um, a lot of testing has to do with the fact that they actually test it on white patients more than they did with black patients. So therefore, like for instance, things like post ox post ox monitor ox monitors they are typically formulated for white skin than it is for darker colored skin tones. So when it comes to post ox monitors, you know, things like that, it's just like, it, it doesn't measure it as accurately as it should. There's also uh, measures and testing, even in our instruments, when it, it, it changes the values or changes the calculations for somebody black versus white. So this doctor here, I call him doctor, I think he's still a medical student, but he's doing, you know, some great work when it comes to 
uh, when it comes to basically talking about the disparities in in healthcare. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show one out of many. So let me see. I'll just do this one. Almost four years ago, in December 2020, I made this video about a racial disparity with a device called a pulse oximeter. Pulse oximeters look like this. They're devices that go on your finger and they measure what's called your blood oxygen saturation level. The studies like this one have shown that pulse oximeters are three times as likely to show inaccurate, overestimated oxygen saturation levels in patients with darker skin tones. What's crazy is for decades, scientists have published studies in journals like this one about how pulse oximeters don't work equally in darker skin tones. In fact, this article, which says that skin pigmentation and other absorbers impact measurement of pulse oximeters, is from 1976. Yet even now, years after I made my video, the problem still hasn't been fixed and conversations are still ongoing. So here's some updates about what's happened since. First, in 2021, the FDA finally issued a warning about the limitations of pulse oximeters, how they may not read equally in darker skin tones. In 2022, an FDA panel met to review the clinical data about the accuracy of pulse oximeters. Studies from that year found that the overestimation of oxygen levels led to Black patients receiving delayed care when it came to COVID-19. And just last month, in February 2024, the FDA panel met again to evaluate the accuracy and performance of pulse oximeters in patients with darker skin. I'm honestly not surprised how long it's taking to fix this problem. The reason this disparity exists is because it's based on data and research that has historically excluded people of color. So much of medicine is built off of white, able-bodied male perspectives. And that's why it's so important to understand the biases that exist in technology, how that gets passed down to patients, and how that gets perpetuated in a system. Almost four years ago, in December 2020, I made this video about a racial disparity with a device called a pulse. So basically, that's based on you know, the research is always done on male, white, cisgender, right? Typically. And so when it comes to a lot of the racial disparities, it's based on prior research that was based on racist assumptions that happens within us. So with that being said, it happens um, quite a bit but I just wanna share this with you guys. So this is the article that I would like for you guys to see. And shout out to Leroy for this article. So, let me make sure this is large enough. And yes, you are reading this correct. It says, a biased test kept thousands of black people from getting a kidney transplant. It's finally changing. I just wanna stop you there before I get into the article. Because as somebody that's trying to get a kidney transplant now, I want you guys to think about if I had tried for a kidney transplant years ago. Keep that in your brain. Let's go. It says Jasmine Evans has been waiting for a new kidney for four years when her hospital revealed shocking news. She should have been put on a transplant list in 2015 instead of 2019. And a racially biased organ test was to blame. And upsetting as that notification was, it was also part of an unprecedented move to mitigate the racial inequity. Evans is among more than 14,000 Black kidney transplant candidates so far given credit for lost waiting time moving them up the priority list for their transplant. Yes, 
There are black patients that should have been transplanted a long time ago, but because of this test, they did not get the transplant in the time that they should have gotten it. Is that a class issue or is that a race issue? Let's continue. Says, she says, I remember just reading that letter over and over again. She said, how could this happen? Says at issue is a once widely used test that overestimated how well black people's kidneys were functioning, making them look healthier than they really were, all because of an automated formula that calculates results for black and non-black patients differently. That race-based equation could delay diagnosis of organ failure and evaluation for a transplant, exacerbating other disparities that already make black patients more at risk for needing a new kidney, but less likely to get one. Since a few years ago, the National Kidney Foundation and American Society of Nephrology prodded laboratories to switch to a race-free equations in calculating kidney function. Then the U.S. Organ Transplant Network ordered hospitals to use only race-neutral tests, resulting in adding new patients to the kidney waiting list. Quote, the immediate question came up, what about the people on the list right now? You can't just leave them behind, end quote, said Dr. Martha Pav uh, Pavlakis of Boston's Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and former chair of the Network Kidney Committee. Pavlakis called what happened next an attempt at restorative justice. The Transplant Network gave hospitals a year to uncover which Black kidney candidates could have qualified for a new kidney sooner if not for the race-based test and adjust their waiting time to make up for it. That look back continues for each newly listed Black patient to see if they too should have been referred sooner. So when people come to me and talk about, oh, well, we shouldn't be looking for, you know, to give black people reparations because their, you know, ancestors were the ones that were wrong. Look at what's going on with black people today. Look at what's going on with us, even when it comes to in regards to kidney transplants. There's a lot of us that should have gotten a transplant a while back, but we never did. And now because equity is being introduced, I know some people don't like that word. Now we're getting being bumped up to the list because it's the just and right thing to do. Are white people who are patients on that list going to get mad because they were up on the list before some of these black people were based on a racist system and testing that put them behind? Or are you going to say, you know what, that was wrong of what was happening to them. And so I'm glad now that they're actually going to get put on the right spot on the list even though I was originally ahead of them, that wasn't the right spot. They actually needed it before I did. Let's continue. Between January, 2023 and, and mid-March, more than 14,300 Black kidney transplant candidates have had their wait times modified by an average of two years, according to the United Network of Organ Sharing, which runs the transplant system. So far, more than 2,800 of them, including Evans, have received a transplant. But it's just one example of a larger problem permeating healthcare. 
numerous formulas or algorithms used in medical decisions, treatment guidelines, diagnostic tests, risk calculators adjust the answers according to race or ethnicity in a way that puts people of color at a disadvantage. We are literally, as Black people, treated worse in the healthcare system because of the color of our skin. So it is also based on healthcare that we are treated. And it's, and it's factored into the machines. Given how embedded these equations are in medical software and electronic records, even doctors may not realize how widely they impact care decisions. Health equity scholars have been raising alarm bells about the way race has been misused in clinical algorithms for decades. That's from Dr. Michelle Morse from New York City's chief medical officer. Change is beginning slowly, no matter, I'm sorry, no longer are obstetricians opposed to include race in determining the risk of a pregnant woman attempting vaginal birth after a prior C-section. The American Heart Association just removed race from a commonly used calculator of people's heart disease risk. The American Thoracic Society has urged replacing race-based lung function evaluation. The interesting part, especially about that, especially about race-based lung function, I can't tell you how many Black people may have end up having asthma, but we're told we don't have it. Or how many of us Black people are in pain, but we're told it's not as bad as if we were, unless we were white? How many Black women have complained of pain? And they should have been diagnosed with endometriosis. But because the OBGYN just said, ah, they're black, they have a higher tolerance for pain. It's just strong cramps. When in reality, they actually had a condition that needed to be treated. This happens all the time, all the time. And how are black people treated within the medical system? A lot like a lot like the way we're treated in the criminal justice system. We're not believed. Let's continue. It says the kidney saga is unique because of the effort to remedy a past wrong. Quote, lots of time when we see you we see health inequities. We just assume there's nothing we can do about it. We can make changes to restore faith in the health system and actually address the unfair and unavoidable outcomes that Black people and other people of color face, end quote. Black Americans are over three times more likely than white people to experience kidney failure. I'm going to read this again. Black Americans are over three times more likely than white people to experience kidney failure failure of the roughly 89,000 people currently on the waiting list for a new kidney, about 30% are black. I want you guys to go in your mind and go back to the statistic. How many people in the United States are black of African descent? How many of us? That's right, 13%, 13%. And yet 30% of us are experiencing kidney failure. Why is that? Care to think about it? Anyone? Let's continue. It says race isn't a biological factor like age, sex, or weight. I'm gonna repeat that again. Race isn't a biological factor like age, sex, or weight. It is a social construct. I would, 
a lot add to this is not just a social construct, it is also a colonial construct. It says, so how does this make its way into calculations of kidney function? Now, let's get into the science. It says the EGFR, or estimated granular filtration rate, evaluates kidney health based on how quickly a waste compound called creatinine gets filtered from blood. It says in 1999, an equation used to calculate EGFR was modified to adjust Black people's results compared to everyone else. Remember what I said when I ended up on dialysis. I ended up on dialysis in 2007. This is after 1999. Meaning, when they calculated my GFR, guess what, chicken butt? That means that mine was calculated according to my skin color. Which means that I was calculated according to a race-based system. Let's continue. Until recently, that meant many lab reports would list two results, one calculated for Black patients and another for Black patients, I'm sorry, for non-Black patients and another for Black patients that could overestimate kidney function by as much as 16%. Now, I'm going to share this with y'all, all right? Because I have, hang on, let me enlarge myself. All right. So I have my labs from last month right here, right? Now, it measures the creatinine levels. Now, my creatinine, let me see. So the typical range for a person on dialysis is males, 18 to 14, and then females, 6 to 12. So 8 to 14 and females, females 6 to 12. Creatinine is made by the body and depends on how muscular and or active a person is. Creatinine is removed by the kidneys in dialysis. Creatinine is an indicator of how well you are dialyzed and your kidney function. So if your creatinine is high, that means that your body isn't filtering out as much according to the GFR or the EGFR as it should, right? So I'll just share this here. So hang on, let me put that down. All right, so if you guys can see creatinine, right? Right there, right? Eight to 14, right? And I'm right at the edge, right? Which means that my dialysis cleaning is not as sufficient as it should be. It should be better. But with that being said, As far as this is concerned, it's probably updated now to not factor in my race. But back in the, the day, oh, my race was factored in. Which means that my condition was seen as slightly better than what it actually was. So when it comes to people talking about like what's going on in far as far as health disparities and things like that it's even factored into how we measure things and and, and testing all right so let's go back it says not every black kidney candidate was affected some may have had kidney failure diagnosed without a test others to have a chance at benefiting from UNOS, uh, UNOS mandated look back, transplant center staff turned detectives often worked ap after hours and weekends hunting years old records for a test that recalculated without race adjustment might make the difference. So, Let's go here. It says, how long does it take a kidney transplant? Dep how long it takes to get a kidney transplant depends on the patient's blood type, medical urgency, and a mix of other factors, including how long they've been on the waiting list. 
Evans first listed in April 2019 when Jefferson Transplant Center unearthed her old tests. They found she should have qualified in September 2015. So, says, just for context, when I was still an undergrad, I could have been on the list. She said what she called mind-blowing credit of three and a half more years waiting also provide a glimmer of hope that she be offered a matching kidney soon. So she was three and a half years behind based on a race-based test. So I think it's important when we talk about how we're treated within the medical field that people, especially those of you who are in the medical field, It puts us at a disadvantage each and every time. Why do I get, why do I feel relieved whenever I have a black tech, a black nurse or a black doctor? Why do I feel relieved? That's not to say that just because they're Black doesn't mean that they still won't go by some of the racial biases that are taught to many medical students. It's not to say that. It's that a lot of times that people of color, especially Black people who are techs, nurses, doctors, specialists, a lot of times they will say, hmm, that's BS. I'm going to test for this anyway, despite what I was taught. Like for instance, oh, I have a female here that's complaining of unusually strong uh, pain, especially during menstruation. Let me test to see if she have, might have endometriosis. I'm not going to take what her pain, she says, and then just say, you know what? No, because black people typically have a higher pain tolerance. No, that to me is BS. Or if somebody is black that's complaining about pain when they come into the hospital, I'm not going to give them a, I'm not going to give them a less regard when they said they have pain, especially if they're like on a pain scale on from one to 10, how much are you hurting? And if they're telling me eight, nine, you know, or 10, then I'm going to give them less regard than a white person who says eight, nine, or 10. Just because I can't see the red in our faces doesn't mean we're not hurting that much. Okay? Just because we're darker skin and you can't see us blushing or you can't see our face turning red as red doesn't mean that we're not feeling the way we feel. Mm. Let me share something with you guys too. This is from the National Center for Biotechnology Information. This is a part of the NIH. It says racial disparities in medical care should be understood within the context of racial inequities in societal institutions. Systematic discrimination is not the aberrant behavior, but of a few, but often supported by institutional policies and unconscious bias based on negative stereotypes. Effectively addressing disparities in the quality of care requires improved data systems, increased regulatory vigilance, a new initiative to appropriately train medical professionals and recruit more providers from disadvantaged minority backgrounds. Now, let me ask you something. To the people who hate DEI, huh, this part says, recruit more providers from disadvantaged minority backgrounds. How would that help? What did I say earlier? 
to combat some of the disparities that is within our systems, our medical systems already, to combat that, you need some people that have our experience in order to know. For instance, there was a video of a, oh, I wish I had found it, but there was a video of a black nurse that said that a white nurse wanted to do a, I think she was a, a nurse in, in the, the labor and delivery unit. And she, the white nurse wanted to have a psychological consult on the patient because she said she kept hitting her head. She said, everything's fine, but she just keeps hitting her, hit her, hitting her head. Black people, a black woman hitting herself on the head. What is that? Black woman doing this. What is that? Is that need for a, a psych consult? Is this a need for a psych consult? No. Why? Because a black nurse recognized that she probably had a weave or sew in and her head was itching. So the only way to scratch it is to pat it. But because the white nurse doesn't know anything about that, guess what? She wanted to get the black woman a psych eval. She wanted to waste the psych doctor's time on a patient that didn't need it and then potentially get a psych doctor to make her think that she was crazy by hitting herself in the head when really she was just itching. So when people talk about, oh, well, DEI, look, by the way, it's not our fault that it exists. Get rid of these disparities, then, hey, we won't need it. So it says, identifying and implementing effective strategies to eliminate racial inequalities in health status and medical care should be made a national priority. As national data revealed that over the past 50 years, the health of both black and white persons has improved in the United States as evidenced by increases of life expectancy and declines of infant and adult mortality. However, black persons continue to have higher rates of morbidity and mortality than white persons for most indicators of physical health. Hispanics and, Indian, and American Indians also have elevated disease and death rates for multiple conditions. Although the role of medical care as a determinant of health is somewhat limited, medical care, especially preventative care, early intervention, and the appropriate management of chronic disease can play an important role in health. Thus, racial and ethnic differentials in the, in to, in the quantity and quality of care are likely contributor of racial disparities in health status. Compared with white persons, black persons, and other minorities have lower levels of access to medical care in the United States due to higher rates of unemployment and underrepresentation in good paying jobs that also include health insurance as part of a benefit package. So guess what? Here's the question. Is it race? Is it class? Or is it both? I'll wait. Race and class or race and identity are intertwined within this country. It is not something that we can get away from without Improving the equity between people who have been disadvantaged for, I'd say, the last four to 500 years. I think that's important. It says more striking and disconcerting to many is the large and growing number of studies that find racial differences 
in the receipt of major therapeutic procedures for a broad range of conditions, even after adjustment for insurance status and severity of disease. So even when you account for adjustments for insurance status and severity of disease, there's still differences. There's still differences in the receipt of ma major therapeutic procedures. It says, especially surprising are many other racial disparities in context where differences in economic status and insurance coverage are minimized, such as the Veterans Health Administration, the VA, and the Medicare program. Other research indicates that Although physicians' ability to detect the severity of pain does not differ for Hispanic versus non-Hispanic white patients, Hispanic patients are markedly less likely than non-Hispanic white patients to receive adequate analgesia. Recent studies document that these differences in their receipt of therapeutic procedures have adverse effects on health of minority groups. How do we make sense of these differences and how do we move forward with the effective policy and research agenda to eliminate these disparities? So when we talk about these things, it's not just, oh, you're a liberal because you're talking about race. Stop that. Stop it. because that is also an important subject to cover. And I'm gonna be honest with you, real talk, and this is no offense to anybody watching. But this is why a lot of us black people on the left look at some people who are white on the left with a side eye. It needs to be looked at further like it's not just class only and just just let you know it's not race only either so those of you who only want to talk about race and want to keep the capitalist system in place <laughs> no it is not you also have to look at the class issue it is both and it's both been both for quite a while it's been both ever since the inception of this nation So I think this is something that needs to be discussed further, especially when it comes to how we are treated within the medical system. So yeah. And uh, this is another reason why I think that we need to have a nationalized healthcare system. A nationalized healthcare system that also does an equitable revamping of our system so that it's like, okay, we have a nationalized healthcare system. Let's push for more people who are of marginalized communities into our healthcare system so that we can circumvent the disparities that have been put about in years prior. I think that's important because if we, let's say hypothetically, we introduce a nationalized healthcare system here in the United States, but what about the disparities that are there according to medical research from the past? Are we gonna just continuously depend on that medical research from the past? Or are we going to redo and revamp and look again at some of these research results and some of these algorithms that have been put our way and say, hmm, the doctors were on the right track, but they shouldn't have counted race in this regard. So then it's not only a class issue, but it's also a race issue that we're also factoring into. So, with that being said, 
thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.